From Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa, this is Anchored in Faith. But if John Hahn was here today, he would look you in the eye, directly in the camera, and he would say, I'm not going to pull any bones, we're not going to sugarcoat anything, I'm going to tell you like it is. And you can either take it and work with it, or you can just be mad at me and never see me again. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to tell you this morning what I'm going to say. You can either take it and receive it and do something with it. Or you can just be mad at me. And that's fine with me because... I'm going to be like John. I'm only going to tell you what's in the Word of God. And I'm going to read you straight from the Word of God what it says. And you're going to have to either accept it or try to figure out how to tear that page out of the Bible, which means that you think the Bible's a myth. And so uh, here we go. Praise the Lord. So anyhow, we're living in a world that's really messed up. Amen. Now, when I say world, you could take that in two directions. You could take that as the people out in the world that's not in the church, or the whole world itself as one. Well, I'm not just pointing my finger at the world out there. But it's not in the church. I'm pointing the finger at the whole thing in a, as one, including the church. The church today, in my opinion, of course, this is my opinion, is compromised with the world. Now, that's just the way I feel. I've been into enough churches. I've seen enough things going on. And I've been really disappointed. Now, this was something that was we were talking about this morning. I looked some people in the eye and I said, I'm old school. I don't understand the new school. I don't know how you get X, Y equals 2 or whatever, whatever. Or how you can... These things do not add up in my mind. I'm old school. I was taught under an old school pastor. And he told me, and he showed me, and he was an example to me of what God can do. Now the new school, they're trying to do their own thing. And it's not working. Oh, don't, don't get me wrong. There's some, there's churches that's getting people saved, but I'm going to say this too. I, I question their salvation. Because you see, we've compromised. And I'm not going to say what we're compromising in, but the, comp the things that we're compromising in is not... Holy is not going to create you as a spiritual person. Not saying that you're not saved. There's, there's, a, there's a fine line here, okay? But the new school is satisfied with what they have. Because there's compensation in the church. And I, myself, want people to have, and Christ wants you to have, the very best. And some of these things that's going on now, um, they're having problems. They're trying to figure out, in, in my day, you, when you died in our church, the church I attended, you died because of old age. We were, I don't know what it was, but 
we didn't we didn't worry about cancer or heart attacks or anything like that. The people in our church died of old age, of natural causes. Today, the church has got people dying of everything. Yeah, all different diseases. And to me, that's that's an indication that they don't have the protection as strong in the church today as what it was back then. Now, and, and, it, and it hurts me because when you go to talk to somebody about uh, what happened in the old days, well, that was for you. Well, I went to a church meeting one time and the Holy Spirit got a hold of the church and the church just absolutely went in. I mean, it went out of this world. And this went on not for just 20 minutes or 10 minutes like some people think that's a lifetime. It went on for like two or three hours. And when the pastor's daughter came up to me and put her arms around me, she said, what was this? Is this what daddy used to call the what happened in the old days? And I said, yeah, it is, honey. This is what happened in the old days. I can't believe, and she, the tears were running down her eyes. Old school, new school. So see where we're at today? Now, I, I, I'm not perfect. I don't have the most perfect health. My wife don't have the most perfect health. But we're from the old school. And I, and I depend upon God to protect us. And I could safely say that we have been protected numerous times. Is that correct, honey? And I account that for being grown up in the old school. And when I go to pray for somebody in the hospital or go to talk to somebody, they're still in this compromising situation and then they wonder why Christ is not fully working in them. So I want to go in the book of Numbers and... This is where Moses has directed a group of Israelites, 12 in fact, to go into the land of Canaan to go and explore and see what's going on. And now they have come back. Okay. They have come back from, and they've reported about the land of milk and honey. They've reported about how big the fruits are and how beautiful the area is in the ground. But they come back with this problem and they say, there's giants in the land. I'm paraphrasing this right now at this point. There's giants in the land. Let me explain something to you in your life right now. There will always be giants in your land. You are going to face giants. David faced a giant. David believed and had faith in his Lord and destroyed the giant. But today, I question your faith. We've overpowered a lot of giants in between Teresa and I. I would say my dad and mom did in the 25, 30 years of ministry, they overcome thousands of giants. But where does that put you? Where does that put you today? I know that there's a numerous amount of people that are questioning God. They question God. They're questioning what their miracles could be. 
So I'm going to show you in the Old Testament, in, num in Numbers, we're going to start in chapter 14, first verse, and I'm working out of an NIV. So it starts off that night. Now they, they've all gathered around and they've had a fit. The Israelites, all the, the people that went to explore. And they say there's giants in the land. And they look at these giants as if they're just grasshoppers. So that's a pretty good sized giant. Okay, verse 1, 14. That night... And, that night, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept out loud. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in the desert. Now, that's, this is what, how people feel. Well, if I would have gave up years ago, I wouldn't be faced with the situation I'm at today. I wouldn't have to deal with it. I'd be dead and I'd be in the ground. A lot of people, that's their out. Well, if I would have just stayed where I was at. And so it says, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plumper, plumpers. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, should choose a, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Okay. So they bring up what they're saying. Lord, why would you drag us here to this beautiful land to have us to be destroyed? And then they turn right around. Now they're getting a group of people. Well, let's get us a new leader and let's march ourselves back to Egypt so we can get become slaves again. Let's march ourselves back to sin. Okay, we're going to flip this over. Now that we're Christian and we're, we can't deal with what God has provided for us, let's just pick ourselves up and let's just go back to sin. Now that's basically what, he, what the Israelites are saying. God's not providing me with what he promised me, so I'm just going to go back and just do my thing. If your Christians today are giving up, it's easier to just go back and do my thing. And that's why sometimes I had a minister one time, a pastor one time, say the fact, he says, I got 250 people in the church, and I'd be lucky if 10 would make it to heaven. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> that's not even 10%. So you see where I'm coming from? So I'm from the old school. And you all over here at the new school, if you can't cut it, you just say, I've given up. I'm going back to what I was. Bless God, the Bible says that the, I can receive all these miracles. I ain't seen nothing. So therefore, I have ministered to this one young lady. I have begged. I have pleaded. I have very carefully explained. Teresa and I have counseled with her and counseled with her and counseled with her. And she got into the church. And she got saved. And she got baptized. And her kids did. But there's a problem. And I don't know what's going on. And Teresa and I are scared. Because you see, sin walks in and says, so, all these things have happened for you. 
And she's gotten a degree and this, that, and whatever else. She's got a good job and all that. God is really basically, and she's got an opportunity to work in the church and everything. But there's this one sin that is trying to creep back in her life. Am I right? The children's daddy. Just leave it alone. See, there's too much truth. So I'll leave that alone. But that's how this works. We trust God only so far. And if we don't get our miracles, if we don't receive, and if we don't get what we want, see what I'm saying? Old school, new school. Old school says, the Bible says, be patient and wait upon the Lord. New school says, I want now. You can't give it to me now? I'm going to go in my room, slam the door shut, and I'm going to go back to where I was. I don't think John Hahn would disapprove of what I just said there. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their face in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, in a cave, son of Jer... Jew, I can't say it now. Jephthah, give me help. Okay, pass that. Who were among them, who, those who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelites, say, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly, not partly, not a portion, not a little bit, exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, okay, new school, if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land and the land of flow and land flowing with milk and honey and will give us this land. New school, here's a flash. If you obey the Lord and stay strong with him, he will let you possess the new land. But you've got to stand against the giants. you got to quit worrying about being a grasshopper and understand you are a son and daughter of the Lord. You have your sword. And if you do good unto the Lord, you will possess an exceedingly good portion of land. Old school, we sit back and we patiently wait for the Lord to say, go get your land. Take it with your sword. Go in and take care of the giants. New school says, I've done all I'm going to do. And if I ain't going to get any more, and if the Lord's not going to just hand it over to me without working for it, then I'm just going to go back to the room, shut the door, and I'm going to do what I want. Part of my old school has forgotten what it means to set patiently and figure out what's going on. They have forgotten what the Lord has taught us. There's one thing that my wife and I have, have always, we always remember what the Lord did for us. And you see, 
You got to be thankful for the things that you've already received. But the Lord also says, give praise unto the things that you have not received. Amen. feel like John's helping me a little bit here. You see what I'm saying? The Lord said, give praise for the things you have not seen. Right. Well, that must be really complicated for people in the new school. How complicated could that be? I hope this is all making sense. Because it makes sense to me. You patiently wait and you give praise for the things. How, how do I, I always say, Lord, when I pray a prayer, I'll say, Lord, thank you for the things that you have done for us. But Lord, thank you for the things that you're going to do for us. Now I'm getting excited. I can feel the hairs on my, th on my three hairs stand up on my head. You see what I'm saying? This is exciting. Yes, yes. And the problem existed in the new te in the Old Testament. So this has been going on for thousands of years. And all I'm trying to do is tell you the truth. That there's a process. That God has a plan. i got to finish this up here. I'll get back up here. And I want to read a little bit more portion of, this, of the word. Uh, let's see. Oh, and if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land, the land flowing with milk and honey. And we'll give it and will give it to us. Only do not rebel. Oh, there's that word, rebel. rebel. Do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, which I'm not afraid of anybody, especially those demons that try to come at me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Every once in a while they catch me off guard and I shake. But then reality kicks in. Who am I? I'm a child of God. Amen. I've been adopted by the Lord. Amen. I have a sword that was provided for me. I have a way to fight. And do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will swap. What? We will swallow them up. We will slaughter the demons that come before us, we will not stand and waver. We will not shake in our shoes. We will stand and swallow them up. We will show them that we are not grasshoppers, but we are children of God. That we know our business. And to begin with, you should know right now who wins the battle. Amen. Who's going to be the winner? We are. So, why are you going to your back room, shutting the door, and doing what you used to do? Because you're not patient. You don't trust the Lord. And then it goes on and says, the, protect, the protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. But the whole assembly talked about stoning them. Then the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of the meeting to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, and this is my question to New School, and part of old school. How long will these people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me? In spite of all, here we go, the miraculous. Can I get an amen? amen. A miraculous signs. 
Right, Teresa? How many signs have we had? Many. How many times have we defeated Satan? Many. How many times have we had to sit and patiently wait? Many. That's old school. It works. It works, folks. In spite of, I have performed among them. I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them, but I will make you into a, a nation greater and stronger than they. Okay, so what they actually said was, how long are they going to take and give up? So therefore now I'm just going to let them go off into the desert and wander around for 40 years until there are all these negativity people have passed and dead. And then I'm going to create a new nation. So how long is the new school going to take and walk off and run around in the wilderness? Why us old school? I'm telling you. And I'm doing everything I can to get people to understand old school works. So I'm going to ask you folks, what do you think? Do you want to try old school and really get to the land of milk and honey? Or do you want to try your new way and then finally decide, well, it's just not worth it. So therefore, if God's not going to I'm just going to go back into the room and shut the door and do my thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. God has got a plan for us. God has set a plan for us clear back in the Old Testament. And if you read it and you read it, you'll find out that God always has a plan. It's just yeah. taking your time and patience. Be patient for the Lord. And look what the Lord will do. There's another, stand fast and listen to what the Lord will do. Don't just stand there and say, well, if I don't get it right now, I'm done. Praise the Lord. Receive Christ into your life. Repent of your sins. Turn away from your sins. Pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I need you in my life. I ask you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I repent of my sins, and I want you in my life forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. In addition to our postal address, Anchored in Faith Gospel Church has several electronic means to connect with you. Find our TV episodes at youtube.com slash anchored in faith. Visit our website at anchoredinfaith.org. Our phone number, which is area code 319-828-4815. Our email is tv at anchoredinfaith.org. And find us on Facebook by typing at AIFGC into the Facebook search box. We are actually a small church. If you call our 828-4815 phone number, leave a short message and make sure to include your phone number so we can call you back since we do not have caller ID. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, P.O. Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.